Everybody is Dr. Sandy and I want to thank you so much for joining us. We're a little bit on time today. I'm so proud of myself. And I have I have our guest speaker Rashika and I am so excited because she's one of my new friends that is from Hungry to Speak, which is Les Brown's personal development group, which, you know, he helps us with our speaking and stuff like that um, and helps mold us into we some of us have been speaking, as you guys know, that I've been doing this for a while, but I want Les Brown like Les Brown is the, the legend, you know, to be able to help mold me into what I want to be. And um, and I am just so thrilled to death. Like I love Ro. Like Ro is awesome. She's very like like one time I had to speak. I don't know if it was before her or after her, but we were both like, ah! <laughs> and they were just like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I think it's very important that not only with nurses against violence, but we have to start doing some healthy diversional tactics. And if it has to be developing a story that is your personal story, not necessarily about what's going on with you and, and out there in the field, but like divert your attention to doing something positive in your life. And that could be talking about and uplifting others. And that's what we do as nurses. We're advocates. We love to talk. And then it's eventually bring your voice back into nursing where you feel strong enough because now you're starting to do some form of healing. So Ro, I, we had this conversation and I, was, and I was just like, I'm looking for guest speakers. I would love to have, you know, you on and and you were telling me a little bit about your background and it was just like, click, click, click. This is perfect. So can you tell me a little bit about your background? Yes. Um, I have 20 plus years in the law enforcement um, arena. I started out behind, I like to say behind the walls. You know, I started out in the jail, in the prison system. And then I eventually, and then years later, you know, after being behind the walls, I was like, I, I wanted to go outside. And then I went into, into the field of, you know, policing. I went on the police officer side. So I went from behind the walls to mm -hmm. actually in the streets. And man, it, 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 it's a journey. It, had, it was a journey, you know. It changed my life. It, it helped mold me into the person that I am today, you know. Um, I met a lot of dope people. You know, it's a lot of dope, like talented, good people that's incarcerated, you know? Right, and, I agree. And, yeah, like, man, the only thing that separated me from them, and this, is, this was my slogan was, I didn't get caught, you know, true story. Well, and I agree because it's like we could we all are, are a step away from getting we call Baker acted, which is involuntarily committed, or we're a step away. Like it's so simple to get yourself yeah. entrapped in such a web. And it's it's like I I would be off from work and it's like, you know, like I can't even explain it. It's like people just want to be heard and they just we're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Most of people, most of the people that I that were in the prison yes. system that I saw were or there were marijuana charges or whatever. Now I just wanted to apologize because I was looking down. Yeah. I was trying to bring it up on uh, Facebook. So if anybody had any questions that I could bring it up. So and I yeah. didn't realize I was on TikTok and it was making that noise. So I apologize. Um, so and I don't I haven't done that in a while, but it is, it is very important that, you know, and I know there's nursing inside of also correctional facilities. And yeah. a lot of people don't understand that a lot of the folks that we're working with that have addiction issues have a, have more than likely, and I'm not trying to put everybody in a basket at all. I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have been incarcerated, yes. a lot of people, and they come in and out of jail and it is, and nurses have never been historically trained to take care of people that have been incarcerated unless yeah. they go into that environment then you either love it or you absolutely hate it Period. Period. <laughs> you know and i was one of those ones i absolutely loved it actually <laughs> yeah it takes a special person though it takes a special person and i can and will say that on my journey like you know in my um the facilities i was working in and you know 
Like I met people who was really passionate. They wanted to be there. Nurses that wanted to be there. And my job was to protect them, you know, because not all inmates, I mean, hey, everybody's not gonna have a good day, you know? Right. So as well as with the hospital, you know, I police on the streets and I did not even know that uh, policing, polices were necessary for the hospital until I got hired at a hospital. But then I, I saw it from a whole, it's a whole different world. So it's really a different world. Yeah, so you so you were also you went from working in corrections, so you kind of did the same thing. I mean, I've been on the floor for a long time, but like you went from corrections and then you went into the hospital setting. So how similar did you see that the hospital was to corrections? Did you find it to be more safe in corrections? Or I would love to hear okay. your input. Definitely more safe in corrections. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> more safe because like i said i had no idea what i was getting into you know as being a police at the hospital but it goes down in the hospital it goes down in the er like man i saw some things that i had no idea that existed you know it's i i, I was like man it's kind of worse than being on the streets as a yeah. street cop because yeah, you're getting it's... off the streets who are like like most of them, most of my experiences, they were high on a substance and they were really all out of their mind. And then they sedate them in the ER and then they send them upstairs, which the nurses have no idea how to work with these kind of patients yeah. that, you know, and if you haven't worked in corrections, you really don't get it right? Like, yeah. I know a lot of if, if we have some correctional nurses that that are on the page and some mental health nurses. So a lot of this is just like, Oh, here goes Rizaldi again. Mm -hmm. But it's it's literally on how like, like everybody, as you said, has a bad day. And mm -hmm. if somebody's incarcerated, it's they had a bad day in the wrong timing. And then they got in trouble or, you know, they they had they're having a bad day. And let me figure out my what my point is they haven't been able to work on how to take care of their anger issues. So mm -hmm. they may have busted down a door. They might've scared somebody. They might've done something because they never learned how to cope with stress or stressors. And, you know, and I yes. thank you again for coming on because a lot of nurses don't understand. Like if you go work in corrections, like if I got offered a corrections, I'd be gone. Like mm -hmm. if I was on the floor. Really, I would be. I'm not telling nurses to get off the floor. I'm saying because <laughs> we need nurses in the hospital, but they're leaving yeah. like nonstop. They're leaving. And, you know, and I want people to know that also correctional nursing is also a great avenue as well. Um, you know, yes, for, you know, it's still nursing. And there's a lot of nurses that don't belong in corrections. There's a lot yes. of nurses that they, they don't, you can't treat people, you can't treat people bad. Yes. So, um, so I want you, let me see if I have anybody that has any questions. We have somebody, thank you sh for sharing your story. Um, mm -hmm. and we have a few people, we have a few people watching and I get a lot of people that, you know, we have shift work as you know. Yeah. Um, so they'll be watching at different times. So let me ask you, so mm -hmm. working as a police officer for how long? I worked as a police officer for five years. I did corrections and well, corrections, I did corrections longer than I did the actual street police, but I was a street police for five years. Well, thank you very much for what you've done. You know, um, it, it can't be easy going from to being a police officer first and foremost, and then yes. you tackled that. So I want to thank you very much for the for what you brought in your service. Um, yes. So I, I want to see, does anybody have any questions, anything you would like to ask Ro? Okay, so what I would like to do, so what we do with Hungry to Speak, and you know, I'm not, I was not told to say the name or anything like that. I love Les Brown. Like Les Brown is who I listened to for at least 20 years that helped yes. me get through some pretty dark times. And, you know, we have to find our own personal development out there. And you're going to see a lot more. Um, we've now have the kindness movement with Nurses Against Violence Unite. And I will be posting that um, as our new, uh, one of our new logos that 
we're going to have a lot of charity work coming through with, with the kindness movement and incorporating people on the outside because they don't understand what Nurses Against Violence is. They have yes. no clue. They think, oh my God, violence in healthcare. Oh, huh. they don't understand. And it's hard for them to understand. Um, so I wanted to define it a little bit better because what it is, is being there for each and every person. And, yes. you know, and then stopping like, the misunderstanding of what, how we take care of all patient, every patient on different, on every level. Yeah. And um, I know there's a lot of really capable and amazing nurses that, and nurses aides that are watching. And I, I just want to acknowledge you, especially in this hard time with COVID and people laying on the floor and getting still punched and the incivility that you're receiving from fellow staff members. And I, I understand is difficult and because I've been on the floor for a while and I'm getting ready to go back next week in an undisclosed hospital um, to work on the floor yes. um, until I take my board. So I'm going to be back in the thick of things. So and I, I wanted to show everybody a little bit about what we do with this organization or with Hungry to Speak and Les Brown and his son. And would you please share us your speech? My set piece, definitely. And can I can I give you, can I can I pay, like can I say thank you to you? Cause I I heard you just now saying thank you to the nurses aides. You acknowledge the nurses aides because you know I I've worked in this scene and I've been in it and a lot of times the nurses aides, the CNAs are they're like overlooked. Yep. You know, and they they do a lot of work, you know, so I just wanted to say thank you for that, for acknowledging them, you know, and, and the role that they play. So it's, first and foremost. Thank you very much. It's very important. I was a CNA's helper before mm -hmm. I could even get my CNA, my licensure, so, or my yeah. uh, certification. So it was from, you know, 16 to 19. And then I, for like 15 years, I was an aide. Yeah. So, and I feel it's very important that we have to acknowledge our team because if it wasn't for the CNA, we would have even more of a tough time trying to handling our assignments because we're not only charting, we're, we're doing our assessments. We are, we're there in the thick of things when patients are going bad and, you know, the list goes on and nobody yeah. takes breaks usually because it's very yes. difficult. So yes, absolutely. They have enormous amount of strength in, and they don't even realize it in our, in our, I mean, I might, you know, I might just keep my mouth shut because I don't <laughs> want a bunch of CNAs walking out, especially where I'm going to be working. Cause I, I love my CNAs. I'll bring you whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it's very important. We have to have a team. Yes. So, and thank you. Um, but I definitely, I definitely feel like we need to have a different kind of not selling Avon, not doing this, not doing that. Yes. It's great for a little bit of extra money, a little bit of happy play money, but when it comes down to it, what are you really healing? What yes. are you really taking care of? Are you taking yes. care of what's inside of you? And mm. with Nurses Against Violence Unite, we are, we geared towards um, the hearts and minds of healthcare workers and how to get you yes. to your next level. And that is something that I have been trying to figure out how I was going to do without, with nurses that are hurting so badly. So I appreciate you coming on to be able to share with us your speech. And then I'll be, you know, uh, I would love to have you on more and yeah. then, and then have, you know, bring some of our fellow folks on here to really start helping people understand and then we can you know work with them so come on to speak life to speak, oh! life. To speak uh -huh. life into into these nurses like because they're needed we need them we yeah. need them and majority of the nurses the people that work in the, the healthcare field like they are passionate about what they do you know like they didn't go through all of that school and take that hard test for no reason. They don't wake up early in the morning and work those 12 hours, sometimes 14, 16 for no reason. Like they realize that this is my calling and and, and like my, the set piece that I'm going to share is life from Londrell. They realize that there's a God in me, there's light in me and they want to share it with the world, you know, because I know what it feels like, you know, and I'm, I'm sure that they can relate, you know, and, and again, this is my set piece by Londrell. It, it makes me 
it, it reminds me of who I am and, and to stay connected with my purpose and my mission, you know, and not to lose faith and not to lose hope because there's a God in me. And I, I definitely would love to speak that life into the nurses that's watching today. But, but Londrell, he said, like, this is the set piece. Londrell, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't heard of him, you can Google him. His name is spelled L-O-N-D-R-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Londrell, he's a music artist. And this particular poem that he wrote, it, it, it ministered to me. It, it woke up the God in me, you know, and, I, and anytime I want to speak life, I would love to, I love to share this piece. But it goes like this. It says, I used to wonder if life was meant for me. After all of the pain and abuse I suffered mentally, I used to look up in the skies in disbelief, in the philosophies of God and divinity. Like what happened to love? What happened to mercy and sympathy? If there is a such thing as heaven, you've gotta be kidding me. Because life on earth is killing me literally. Contemplating suicide, I was ready to die until I searched within and found heaven inside, until I loved myself and found heaven inside. I came to find and realize that there is a God in every soul and every mind. We are that, we are divine. Never lose sight of the light in you. Never lose touch of the love in you. I wrote these words to let you know that I'm proud of you. Thank you for never giving up on the God in you. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a God in you. Never lose touch of the God in you. And, and, and that, never lose touch. Never lose touch, no matter how, how, how hard life gets, how, how, how stressful life gets. I mean, nurses are going through violence right now in the hospital you know, with, with the patients that's there in the hospital with all of the COVID that's going on, all the new restrictions, like it's a battle going on, you know, you feel unworthy. You feel like, 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 what's my, what's my point of being here? Why am I here? You know, some of us probably feel like that. They just want to walk away, but I'm letting you know right now, never lose sight of the light in you, never lose touch of the love in you. You know why you became a nurse. You know why you went to school for all of those years. You took that board and you show up to work every day. You know why the world needs you. We need you. You need you. Don't lose sight of the light in you. Don't lose sight of the, the God in you. Your, this is your God given mission. This is your purpose. And we, we need you, we, we, we need you. We need you, I can't say it enough. We need you. We need you. Your family needs you. Most importantly, you need you. So reconnect with yourself. Speak life into yourself. And know, 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 know that you are necessary. You are necessary. No matter what the world is saying right now, you know, you all, I, I want to give, I want to shout out to you, you know, for standing strong during this first year of COVID. I mean, it was new for all of us, but for y'all to be front line in it. You know, in the mess as like everybody else, but you're in it and, and you're growing. And then now all of a sudden, I mean, they got a whole new stipulation. I mean, things are just different, you know, but I'm just letting you know that that you're, you are important and that you are necessary. And I don't want you to lose sight of your purpose, of your mission, you know, and the reason you chose to be a nurse, give a giver of life, a healer, you know, I'm. Hey man, I'm here to protect you. I'm here to protect you and I'm here to challenge the world. Those that are in the hospital settings from the patients to the family members that come in with the patients, you know, with to the to the uh, cafeteria staff, the janitorial staff, the doctors, man, let's stop the violence. Let's stop the violence. Let's work together. Let's come together and spread this love together, man. Y'all see this heart in the background? You see the hand? You see the hands? Man, the whole world is in God's hands, you know, and we're God's children. And I just don't, I just want us to, to know that and, and reconnect with that God in us, you know? That love, that love, just flowing love, flowing love and don't give up, man, don't give up. And I, I appreciate that. I, I appreciate that. It's just been, 
like 73%, you know, I mean, we are the most targeted between patients of violence in healthcare. Yes. And it is, it is astronomical. And then you have the incivility that happens because of all the stressors on the unit. And then yes. you have administration stressed out. And then it's like, da, 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 da. and it's like, yes. it just needs to stop. And for four, yes. and for 4 million, almost 5 million RNs in this country. Yes. And yet everybody can't do anything together. And with Nurses yes. Against Violence Unite, it is our goal to bring everybody together and let's fight this together in, an, in a kind way. Let's unite. Yes. It's very, very important. So I want to thank yes. you so much for coming on and, and breathing some light into such tough situations. And I want everybody else to know out there that if you're interested in learning how to get out in a more constructive way, besides, you know, we have a lot of nurses that are using and please reach out to me if you need to talk. And if there's a way that I could help you with finding a different diversional tactic to help keep yourself and heal yourself um, and to have a friend that will listen, I'm here for you. Yes. I know a lot of people out there know that they could text me. Um, it's, it's, it's necessary and it, yes. they're worth it. So yes. I want to thank and you. It's hard. It's, hard. it's hard, but we can do it. <laughs> It yes. is necessary. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's why it is necessary that, that we don't lose touch with the light and the love that's in us. It's mm -hmm. in you. No matter man, what's around you, go back to what's in you. You know, yeah. don't disconnect from what's in you. So, like that life support. I mean, like that defibrillator, like all of the tools that you all need to, to help us sustain life, you know? Hey, give CPR to yourself. Ooh, For real, cool. don't just... Yeah. Put the life back into our world, you know? Yeah. And we are what we make it. And, you know, it's unfortunate that so many other extra things are happening, but we're going to get through this as a team. So That's... I want to thank you for coming on <laughs> and sharing I your... You for... I think this is amazing what you are doing, like, because it's needed, it's necessary. It's necessary because all of us, we're all going to go to the hospital. I'm just saying it's inevitable. You and know, I would, so our we all goal, have to work together as a collective. And our huh? goal is to hopefully get as many people out there that are patients and that don't know what's happening to just talk yes. about it and say, listen, there's a lot of violence happening in healthcare, but you know what? If we see something on the floor that's happening to a nurse, how about we go ahead and say something to the supervisor and say the nurse didn't even do anything, if it's true. I mean, obviously you want yeah. to be honest, but stick up for that nurse or stick up for yeah. that nurse's aid or the kitchen yes. helper or whoever is out there that's getting hurt by somebody that is having some mass hysteria and delirium. It is very important that everybody work together to help us with this problem because nurses are broken and yes. it is us to try to help them with trying to hold on. Yes. So with that being said, I want to say thank you again for coming on and I look forward to other meetings with you. And, um, and I, it, it looks like everybody is just watching and just absorbing everything that was said. So thank you very yeah. much for coming on. Thank you for having me. All right. All right. You, you have a good night. Okay. Yes, ma'am. We'll talk again to keep doing the good work. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. All right. Have a good night. You too. <laughs> Bye.